Hi, I'm Tim Ingalls, aka from my website, thenerdydrunk.com. Uh, today is Monday, May 4th, 2009. This is my first test video in front of the camera. I'm going to be covering a couple brief things about beer. Um, this one I am going to be covering glasses and pouring techniques. When it comes to glasses, the biggest question is why? Everybody is used to just a standard shaker, but a lot of beers need a little bit more than just a standard shaker. The biggest reason is a lot of these glasses bring out different flavors of the beer. Some beers will use a snifter, aka a brandy snifter. Some of the Belgian beers will use various goblets, depending on the style and what they want to bring out in the flavors. Some others of the lighter ones will use a kind of a combination of a goblet and a snifter, a tulip glass. You notice the uh, bell coming back out at the top. Some specialty IPAs, Sam Adams Boston Lager, will use the Samuel Adams design glass to accentuate very specific characteristics of the beer. Other ones, like some of the light pilsners or some of the uh, lambics, will use the uh, flute style glass or a very similar to a large champagne glass. And now when it comes to pouring techniques, um, the biggest question, why do you want to be careful when pouring a beer? Head. You actually want to make sure that you create head. Why do you want head? You want to make sure the head will actually allow various aspects of the scent or aroma of the beer to come out. Also, from what I hear, um, especially on some of the lighter, more delicate Belgian beers, some of their uh, triple ales, the head can actually protect the beer and uh, help protect the flavor of the beer as you're slowly enjoying it, because you'll notice some of them have a very large amount of head. The biggest thing that I can say when pouring a beer is make sure that you take your time. You want to make sure that you're pouring the beer correctly. For example, here, New Blair Spotted Cow. Yeah, we'll use the uh, Sam Adams glass. The biggest reason you want to take your time is some of the bottles uh, might be, or beers in bottles might be cask or uh, bottle condition. So you'll have yeast and various sediment at the bottom. Some people enjoy it, some people don't. You might, so you want to take your time and then determine later if you want that flavor. Otherwise, some other uh, beer podcasts I've seen, you get floaties, which some people don't like. When it comes to pouring, some people will say start down the side, start down the center. Some people say strictly go down the center. The biggest thing is just Again, take your time and just judge the beer and what it's going to need to do and adjust your angle and approach as necessary to get the correct amount of head. And we'll stop about there because we've got a little bit of sediment at the bottom. And then you end up with a nice, lovely beer. Mm, lovely aromatics. And it provides a nice, lovely color to the beer itself. And then, like I said, there'll be uh, sediment at the bottom. On uh, some specific uh, beers, like a lot of the uh, white beers, Belgian bits, various styles like that, uh, wheat beers, you'll actually want to pour them mm, about two thirds of the beer, swirl the bottom of the glass, and then pour the rest. Uh, those beers, the sediments will be very small and are actually supposed to be suspended in the beer to add additional flavor. Thank you for joining me on this very brief introduction video. Um, please, I will post this on YouTube, so please post your comments, questions. Uh, visit my website, thenerdydrunk.com. Um, no form yet, but please post your um, questions and uh, comments there as well. Thank you.